Hi there everyone, it's Jakko here. In this tutorial, I'm taking a look at how to create metal using PPR workflows such as uh, metallic roughness and specular glossiness and some of the common mistakes that uh, new artists seem to make in this area. So, so I have this Japanese fire extinguisher here and it is a pretty good example because it has a different materials. So it has a sticker and then it has this painted metal surface in here it has some worn areas in here and then it has a bare metal in here and it's a rubber and some plastic in there so i think this is a good example because it shows the difference that metal makes for for your material so let's take a look how this is done so i'm gonna go and dock this the window maybe here so we can see what we are looking at so this is a metal roughness workflow from Substance Painter. So I've created these maps in there and then I've just imported them the Substance Designer because it's easier to see in Designer those exact maps and those values and also we can manipulate those values in here. So um, I'm gonna take a look at first the base color. So this is the base color or the albedo or the diffuse that is it used to be called. So it has some, you can see it has some values that the metal is, is, is described here with this gray color and, and it has some black values and these black values are actually wrong so I actually made a mistake so this shouldn't never be that black so, so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to fix this first. So I'm going to show you guys how we can validate our base color values so that they are correct. So I'm going to go and do this uh, albedo safe color. So I'm going to write albedo, uh, say PPR albedo safe color. And this respects the metallic, so so this is good for our uh, metallic roughness maps. I'm going to drag and drop this from here. And you can see automatically now uh, our black values became uh, not exactly black but more uh, grayish. And this is actually physically accurate, more accurate than than this so so uh, make sure that one of the, the key point is that make sure you don't go overboard with your values with your uh, values because the, the shader doesn't uh, like um, to to extreme values again so so we can do that and we can also go and do the metallic so i'm going to go and drag this metallic to our uh, map so that now the i'll be the safe color so we can be able to to validate and to make sure that those all values are correct. So I'm going to go and also do validate. So we can do this. We have this PPR base color metallic validate node. So this is the same thing, but it shows us in red what those wrong values are. You can go and uh, do this uh, metallic in here, and you can see that those red values are overboard. But some of these is actually just uh, uh, some of these are just uh, uh, areas between those. Um, uh, so I think the, some of this is probably empty area. So, uh, but but you can see that it anyway it shows red. For example, this this black text in here. It's I was wrong with that. So now uh, this one is fixed. So I'm gonna go try to check. If I'm gonna do drag this uh, this one here. You can see now it's all green. So it's all fixed. All is should be fine. So um, I'm gonna do and an drag and drop this to the base color so we can see. So it, it, this is how it looks now. So um, in uh, this this workflow, in this metal roughness workflow, we have a specific metallic map, and and I think the <clears throat> key key point here is that you should ask yourself: Is that area that you're uh, trying to describe is it metal or not? Is it raw metal or? not raw metal. So if it's a painted metal, such for example this, you can see that it is not metallic. It's not defined as metal. Also some of those dirty areas here uh, are not metal. So those uh, gray areas are like sort of kind of like metal, but um, so these are between values and there are two kinds of people. Some people say that you should never, absolutely never use those in between values in your metallic maps and some people say it's completely fine. I haven't had any big problems with those, so I tend to sort of put just a tiny little bit uh, detail in there when you have dirt or something, so because that helps the shader to describe that area as not metallic, but it can look weird in some instances, so 
so that's something that you should bear in mind so if you have weird issues there then just you can uh, do like levels in here or something to get rid of those values so yes this is the metallic map so it's a black and white it's a simple map and it, it, it shows like for example those uh, weld seams in here you can see that those are uh, metallic because the paint is worn off in those maybe it's been brushed against something or or it's just worn off the metal the, the paint has worn off exposing the raw bare metal so that's the that's our metallic mapping here so metal roughness workflow is a little bit easier to understand for for new newcomers so so those who come from traditional uh, workflows metal roughness is is easy to start with and I definitely recommend to to maybe try this metal roughness workflow first so so that uh, because it's easier to understand you just put uh, you just mark those areas that want to be metal as white and then everything else is black and the shader will take care of uh, uh, re reflectance values for for those areas that are like uh, the D electric and so on and 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 then so for so on and so forth um, again the color in here in the diffuse in the base color um, this value should represent real it should be at least somewhat realistic so if we want to make sure that that's the case we can do this base color so we can go and create base material node in here like so and then we have a PBR workflow with metal roughness for example in here and I'm gonna go dielectric or gold or silver aluminium if I'm just gonna say iron so you can see iron is a little bit brighter than than this whatever this is supposed to be uh, so we can just drag and drop that so so we get exactly the correct uh, base color values for for that and we can also use this when you're using spec loss so you can do that you can use you can use this base material to create physically accurate iron for example you just take those and then grab those values you have specular and you have a yeah you have a, like a diffuse normal specular and so on and then uh, uses also that I'm gonna show you guys that in a minute how to create that but yes yeah, so so in PBR metal roughness you define the metal reflectance value in your diffuse channel not not any other channel please use uh, base color map for that and try to use at least somewhat realistic values so so it's not anything really weird so if you have like a black in here it's gonna look awful so make sure that that sort of um, matches the reality so that's about it, it, it the metallic roughness isn't anyhow anyhow uh, difficult to, to to deal with the roughness is again this is just the microsurface detail so dust and dirt and things like that and that's an, another topic the, the microsurface uh, theory itself uh, the PBR theory itself is is maybe too difficult too long topic to d discover in this tutorial but I'm just trying to focus on the metallic parts so so but what the key, key area is that if you have a painted metal please don't make the metal the paint to be act as, as a metal so if you're just gonna if I'm just gonna go and do like uniform color in here, I'm just gonna go like put white in here. I'm gonna dr drag and drop this one to here. So you can see some people do this. Okay, so you have metallic um, uh, fire stick extinguisher, and then it looks like a car paint, or it looks like a Christmas decoration ball, or so. There are some instances that this could work like if your car maybe kind of sort of works like car paint I'm not sure um, or it could also uh, be like you know those Christmas ball decorations they look like metallic so if you're making Christmas balls then maybe this is good but this doesn't look so good to me at least so uh, yeah so please use metal when it's when you're dealing with raw metal when you're dealing with unpainted raw uncorroded metal so like corrosion and uh, rust and things like that are also not metal so again rust doesn't uh, conduct electricity very well so it's definitely dielectric and it's not metal so that's something to bear in mind so uh, maybe we could take this and we could convert these maps to specular class workflow so let's take a look how we can do that 
So I have another example in here, and I have just uh, imported these maps. So normal doesn't matter, normal is just same, so I'm going to leave that. And I'm going to go and go to materials, extinguisher, and then I'm going to go definitions. I'm going to go and do specular glossiness in here. I'm going to do maybe the occlude, doesn't really matter there. So now it's all weird, of course, because we don't have anything plugged in. I'm going to right click and view outputs in 3D view. So now we have all black because we are not inputting anything. So, um, so what we have now, we have metallic roughness maps in here, and we want to convert these to spec clause. So first I'm going to do again PBR safe color. So I'm going to do again this PBR albedo safe color. I'm going to drag and drop this. I'm going to put input it in here. So now we are getting our base color values here. Looks pretty good. So now what we can do is that we're just going to go and do this right convert in here. And we have this base color metallic roughness converter. All right. So what we can do is that we can input our uh, roughness maps in here. I'm going to do base color first, and then we have again we have this occlusion roughness metallic. So again, R is occlusion, G is roughness, and this is metallic. So I'm going to go uh, G is going to be the roughness, and then B is going to be the metallic. So now when you look at this, we immediately notice that in our diffuse channel the raw metal areas are turned pitch black. This is just completely black. This isn't uh, this black. So when you look at this, you can see that the areas that we are just sort of like the material, the, the rubber itself is kind of like a dark gray, but this metal is not dark gray. This is a pure black zero. This is like, there's nothing here. This is just completely zero, right? So now the shader, is treating this that okay so we have reflectance values for our metal and we don't have any of those reflectance values in our base colors so in specular glossiness we use specific specular channel to to define our reflectance values in our material so those metallic reflectance values go to our specular map which is actually a color map so this isn't like metallic map which is black and white this is actually a color map so if you're using gold or using some other weird alien space metals that looks that actually reflects like a color uh, you can define those values in our specular so now what we can do is that i'm going to drag and drop the diffuse in here and then i'm going to go you can see that it went all black and this is the correct way and then i'm going to uh, just drag the specular in here and then our glossiness and in our uh, uh, specular gloss, uh, the glossiness is just roughness, which is inverted. So, so glossiness or roughness, whichever. But it's just uh, glossiness is inverted roughness, and roughness is inverted glossiness. So that's pretty not too difficult. So you can see that the, the darker areas that are dirty are not very glossy, and so on. So that's about it. We are done. Uh, our material looks pretty good it seems so it this looks pretty much the same that it looked in our roughness workflow so we just now com completely we are able to convert our material values in here to from uh, uh, yeah from metal roughness to specular gloss so again the key when we look at the our specular map in here you can see that you have some red areas in here and what these are is that it's reading the metallic map and it's sort of like interpolating the values uh, because these um, these areas in here these are like you can see there's a little bit red in those areas and that those are the in between values and it's taking this um, uh, albedo value from those because it considers that metallic and then it's taking that reflectance value uh, from our diffuse and destroying it in the specular so these are this is actually the correct way and then you can see also that the metallic areas that are more uh, well more specular you can see that those are now uh, th these values are the metallic uh, correct values so this is the way that you also the specular map when you're dealing with metal metal in PBR so so this is again right you can see there's some uh, also some dirt in here because again, it's coming from that metallic uh, map we've defined. So, 
So this is uh, this is pretty much it. You've got uh, your maps, and and Substance Designer is a great way to deal with uh, conversion of different maps, and you can create your your maps just like you normally do in here, and then just convert them if needed, and you can grab like. Uh, whatever whatever kind of maps you have and you can just you know, automatically do the conversion and always this does a very good job of making that it's physically accurate so again key differences is that in your uh, diffuse channel those pure metal you don't have any values for so it's just completely pitch black in when you're dealing with spec loss workflow and then when you're dealing with your uh, metal roughness workflow you put those values in here so so you have like uh, the proper reflectance value for the metal in also in your diffuse map so I hope this makes sense that that this helps to clarify some of the some of the key issues that I, I've seen some new artists have when when they are transitioning from the old uh, legacy shaders to the new physically accurate shaders well it's been a while for almost 10 years now so so it's not that much new anymore but but uh, yeah the the conceptual the the concept of physically accurate rendering and uh, and the maps and and how to especially the metal it has seems to be like yeah I've, I've been also a little bit confused about it when i started first so i wasn't sure what what is this metallic and what is the spec loss and and all these maps but i hope this uh helps to clarify a little bit the how these two different workflows deal with metal so this was Jakko. I hope you enjoyed and please leave a comment if you have something to add. If, if I made some mistakes, just please go and correct me in the comments. And if you have any questions, just go and ask. I'll try to answer if I can. So this was Jakko. I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.